see that's gone. The core itself is they've built the core, I would say, in alignment to what the customer needs are. So whether it's a checking, remember checking doesn't, I mean, nobody really writes a check anymore. Right. It's really about an account. And if I happen to deal with it in U.S. currency or, you know, uh, euros or whatnot, it'll automatically convert and be able to pool aside money into a pool, right? So customers, customer research all indicates we think of money in pools rather than accounts. Accounts are something that we impose as banks on the customer, you know, a few hundred years right. ago. So they've been able to modify their cores to do that. They've been able to modify uh, the back-end systems are so advanced. I'll give you an example. They run a social campaign where you, um, you know, they, they say, you know, here's a GIC or what we call a term deposit, right? A term deposit is for, say, 3% over one year, okay? If there are enough people that share it and if enough, enough people, um, I would say, sign up for it, the more people that do, they have a publicly shared um, site that shows you, okay, now it's going to go to 3.4% or 3.5%, 3.6%. So it almost goes viral. And at the end of that campaign, whether I think it was like about a month or two, it got shared, I think, well over a few hundred thousand times. They bumped mm -hmm. up. Obviously, they do profit analytics and all of this, right? Um, and it got bumped up, and everybody was happy. The NPS was through the roof. They had a record number of deposits going into their systems. Um, again, the fact that it was near real time and, or you know daily daily viral batches and, and the product that can change so quickly um, on that scale is unheard of in the industry. Mm -hmm. The only other one I would say is probably Raisin that, that has um, and they're again all based in this one's based in Germany and UK uh, through the, the sorry, EU. Raisin has no plans to come to um, uh, North America yet, thank goodness for all of us. But uh, mm -hmm. Fedor, I would say, is on the same level in terms of true innovation and disruption. So that's what I mean. I, guess, yeah. I, I understand the, the, the focus is North American, but those are the ones that are really worrying us here. Yeah. So, so in terms of, um, you know, getting enough agility to actually um, be able to, to do things more from a customer perspective, in, so, so I guess we, we can talk about a couple of things. The so one is microservices and, mm -hmm. you know, what percentage of systems is actually encapsulated with this microservices layer um, that enables that. So how would you think about the different banks in terms of their capabilities there? What are, who, who are the more advanced ones and the further along in that journey? Perfect. So, yeah, I, let me know if, if you want me to get really technical on this or how deep I go. I'm going to start with general and we can dive deeper, right? Okay. So microservices architecture is based, you know, the whole, I'm not sure if, if, how, how deep your tech background is. Essentially. Uh, it's pretty deep. I'm, I, I work deep. in technology in Silicon Valley. So. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's great. Okay, so we'll Specializing we'll in machine learning, this. not microservices, but I understand. Too. Yes. Okay, no, no, that, that's perfect. I, sometimes on, on these calls I have no idea. Not yeah, proud, absolutely. So. You have no reason to know. <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, just so I can tailor my answer to you. Um, mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the question here, I think, is it comes back to the APIs, right? So every bank, well, most banks have a set of APIs. The nuance of that, and, you know, in the public, you know, in a lot of the public communications, we all talk about APIs. The, the, I think the key secret to this is how many of them are written in the right way, whether are they restful surfaces, are they truly open, or are they, you know, built on SOAP, which is a different standard, right? Mm -hmm. So if they are open and they are compatible and they are pluggable, then, you know, in, in the right standard, then they, they can truly be counted as open APIs or, in some cases, truly microservices. The percentage where most banks oh, – so I'm going to start country by country or side. I think at the larger banks – you're probably going to get northwards of, if we're lucky, 40 to 50% of the services within retail banking, right, that are in mm -hmm. truly kind of restful services that are open, uh, along with that, that can be counted as, you know, flexible architecture. Um, mm -hmm. Over time, and again, that, that's the, the story truth. I think people will always quote higher, um, but we're talking about all of retail banking. Beyond retail banking, with commercial or small business, that number varies, but typically it's much lower. Retail is where a lot of that has started, um, just given that those services have been around for longer. And, and, again, the need for a lot of the fintech collaborations that has been going on, 